Hey you guys, thank you again for purchasing a Boba Scan machine. So today I'm going to go through the unboxing of your equipment. So you've received everything via FedEx or UPS, you've taken it out, you'll have a Plano gun case, you'll have a couple white boxes, and then your Reaper arm as well. So we're going to go through what everything is coming out of your box. So you will have the yellow and black thing as your actual ultrasound. On the back you have the waist strap, so if you're wearing it, you know, or hanging it, you can use it that way. You have your probe cord and your probe. This is very important. This is a probe connect or a probe cover. Keep this with it or make something that works. If you need help with that, just let us know if you've lost this. But keep that on your probe. That'll help get you some longevity and keep your ultrasound safe. Other things that are in this box, you have another white box inside here that has kind of your little bits and pieces. You have a training drive that has some information on it. You have a charger. On your charger, keep in mind this is like a laptop charger. It has two parts. There's a port there. Make sure when you plug this in, it pushes in pretty hard. And when you plug it into the wall, make sure that this little green light at the bottom turns on. That tells you that you're getting power to your machine. And then this plugs in on the top of your ultrasound. I'm just going to show you this before we keep going. On the far side here, it would be your left side as you're looking at it, will be where it plugs in to charge. So, and when you're not using it, just make sure that port cover is down. That'll help keep some of the junk out of it. Um, also in this box, you have the keys for your Plano case if you ever want to lock it. You have your manuals. And on the bottom, one of the more helpful things is a bovine fetal aging chart. It's laminated so you can use it, and then some settings as well. So that is what is coming in your Plano case. Now, going through your ultrasound, on the top here, there's some more settings video on our YouTube channel. Go ahead and take a look at that if you have more questions and detail on these machines. But you have a power button. I don't know if you can see the probe cord power button, a plus and minus button that zooms in and out on your image, a menu button which will get you the settings menu as well as kind of the, the second menu on the left side of the screen is more of your setup menu, and the exam button will toggle through those preset exams that we set for you. If you have questions on those, just give us a call. The ports on the top, we will, I'll show you these in just a sec. This is the Limo port that is for connecting your viewing device. You have a video cable port, so if you need to plug it into, basically it's the same cable connector that's on the back of your DVD player, the yellow, the red, and the white. You can use one of those to connect it to any device that has that port. And then your charging port that we went over already. So that's the basics of the ultrasound. This front plate here is a heat plate. Make sure that if you do hang this on a chute, make sure that it is flipped up so there's plenty of air moving. This will get warm, that big battery in there will need to dissipate some of the heat, especially if it's warm outside when you're using it. So take the sticker off, you know, let that be available to dissipate the um, heat coming off of there. All right, so if you bought a 2.0 monitor, it's gonna come in a box like this. And in there, you will have a strap for hanging it. If you wanna put it around your neck or hang it off of the chute, depending on what your setups are, that's what that strap's for. Again, you have the same charger as the ultrasound. Same thing, make sure it's plugged in and that green light is on. You have a manual in the bottom of that box and the ultrasound monitor. If you purchase the RAM mount hanging kit, we will have pre-installed the plate on top here. If not, it'll just be these screws, but this would be the RAM mount kit. First things first, you wanna flip it over so you have the pocket side up, unzip it, and on the back side, you're going to see a little sticker that says battery must be turned on. So there is a switch. Make sure you go and turn it on. That switch is down here by the cable side. That's going to get power. This is a hard shutoff switch because this is a touchscreen monitor. If you don't have that turned off, it will do a slow pull on the battery. So that's why that hard shutoff switch is there. So to charge it and to use it, make sure that switch is turned on. Otherwise, it won't work correctly. So now, if we go ahead and open this up, our monitor is on, and we are 
getting a, oh, there's a sticker that tells you you have to have a hard shut off switch. We are actually getting a little bit of an image from a different machine because we are on wireless. To change that, we will have already set this for you if you purchased a Bovo scan package, but if for some reason you don't get an image, it looks something like this. In the upper left hand corner, it says VGA. That is telling you that this monitor's input is going to be pulling off of a VGA cable. That is what you need to hook up to your Bovo scan. So the cable is in the back. This is your Wemo connector. There's a little red dot on there. You probably can't see it from here, but the red dot lines up with the red line on the top of your monitor or on top of your ultrasound. So plug that in, turn it on, and we should be seeing an image come up on your on this monitor. So now you have plugged in and turned on your monitor. If for some reason you are seeing a blue image or something else, use that paw print button that changes the input channel like I just said. The other buttons and things you're seeing on your screen here, you have the power button on the bottom, let me over here on your bottom right side. The paw print button is to change inputs. The book button is the menu button. The left and right arrows are to be able to change through those. And the lights at the bottom of the screen indicate whether it's on, charging, things like that. In the upper right hand corner, you're gonna see a red battery indicator. That is for the monitor battery. Keep in mind that the ultrasound and the monitor are both running on their own respective batteries. So there are two batteries to charge and two battery indicators. The one in the upper right hand corner is your monitor and the one at the very bottom of your screen is your ultrasound. So just know that you have two batteries and to keep an eye on that. Um, the other thing that you shouldn't have to worry about, we're gonna set this, but just in case, you can press that paw print button that's telling you we changed the input on this screen. See, we're not getting an image. I'm probably gonna to try to catch something else, but it says WLAV. It's trying to connect to a wireless signal. So your Bovo scan does not go wireless, so you don't have to worry about that. So just push the paw print button once more and it should say AV or VGA and that VGA is the one you want. So if for some reason that gets bumped, you don't have an image, just you can toggle through it and get to the VGA, plug your cable in, and then you should have an image on your Bova scan. So that is the monitor. When you are done, if you press the power button, that turns off the touch screen. So the machine is off, but because this is a touch screen, it does have that small pull on your battery, like we talked about earlier. So when you're done, just make sure that you flip it over, open it up, and then on the back here, you have, there's this switch under here. Turn that off for storage, and when you charge it, make sure it is on. So that way, you'll, if you charge it and then shut it off, it'll store with a full battery. So that is your monitor setup. If you purchased, actually I'll show you this, if you purchased the RAM mount mounting kit, you're going to have your plate on top here, like we talked about earlier, and the rest of the kit will come in a white box like this, and you will have a little arm that will connect on top here, and then you have a couple different options for the mounting at the chute. You have this here that you can put into a 2x4 that would go in there. You have a ball that you can put into a construction clamp, you know, DeWalt or Irwin, something like that. This just screws into the end of one of those construction clamps. You can go in for square pipe chutes. And if you have a round pipe chute, you can also get the optional claw. This works great on anything round piped. Um, so this is probably one of my favorite options with the RAM mount kit. It just makes it easy to hang up chute side and very quick to set up. So, Lastly, I want to go through if you purchase goggles with your Bova scan instead of a monitor. Pretty similar as far as the way it hooks up, but it's even easier because you just have the goggle options. Um, you have a 
card that will show you that comes with your Vista goggles. It'll show you the different options for how to mount your goggles because goggles are a lot like glasses for everybody. Everyone has a slightly different fit and focus. There's not really a one size fits all option. So we have a couple different options of how to mount your goggles. This one coming right out of the box is on what we call our headset. This is a GoPro mount, so you can adjust all of these. You can take out an arm in the middle if you want it further out or for closer, you can move it around quite a bit. It's a great option. I would highly recommend go ahead before you go out to do cows, put this on your head, loosen all these screws up, set it to where you like it, and then tighten those screws because that'll just make it a lot easier when you're out going, you're not trying to find that good spot where you like it. Play around with it a little bit. So this would be the headset option. In this box, you also have a kind of GoPro band strap option. It's gonna come, so this one is my favorite in the winter. If you wanna wear a beanie or a hat, you can switch the goggles to be on this, and then you don't have that frame on your head and you can wear a hat. You also have a ball cap kind of, or any hat with a brim mounting option. It's just a GoPro clip that slides onto any brim of a hat. It still has that GoPro and there's another arm on here. So you have lots of different ways you can customize these goggles. Just play around with it a bit because there's different options. Other things to note on these goggles, there are often screen protectors just for shipping on those eyepieces. So those pieces of plastic are meant to peel off, otherwise you'll have a slightly fuzzy image. You have a microfiber cloth in here to clean those lenses, as well as if you're using this headset, a couple extra sweatbands. So that being said, all you have to do to use your goggles is grab your Lemo connector. Again, there is a red dot on here and plug it in, line up the red dot to the red line on your Bova scan, plug it in, turn it on, and you will have an image. A lot of times it works great, just so this isn't in your way to run it up the back of your shirt or vest or something, scrubs, that just keeps it out of the way so you don't get it caught on anything. But it works really well, and it's a pretty simple setup. Most people who do that will wear this on their hips so you can walk up and down as needed. So thank you guys.